Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Michael Traven's RV Center here to congratulate you on the purchase of your Her Heritage Glen 283 RK Travel Trailer. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things I want you to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, I want you to think about all the room you're going to need for this awning to come out. And then on your off campsite, I want you to think not only about your slide, but also where your power and connections and uh, power and water connections are going to be. So in your unit, your power cord is going to plug in all the way on the rear back corner driver's side of your tow vehicle your water connection is going to be right around the corner of that on the rear of your unit so park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite once you arrive get you a good parking spot unhook our hitch next thing we're going to do is level your unit now on a unit as long as this i highly recommend bring your slide in measure it out find the center and put a stick on level have someone watch that level while you raise or lower it with your power tongue jack here. You also have a night docking light should you arrive at night and a manual override right here to get this up and down if you don't have power. Just notice they do have a level that they've stuck on the front of this. That could be handy. But again, I recommend one in the middle. Once we got our unit level and stable, or excuse me, level. Next thing we're gonna do is stabilize it. Your trailer comes equipped with power stabilizing jacks. Before I run these down, I am going to recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are gonna protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, hot black top in the summer. Really good investment. Grab a four pack of them, put two of them down underneath these, hit extend. Now you will notice your feet may need to be adjusted. Run these ones down. You see they have to be straightened out. See sometimes one will run down before the other. Straighten that foot out. Oh, extend. Once one stops, the other one will run down. Get your pads down. Now you're only going to want to run these down just until they're taut and it feels like it's going to start lifting the unit. Remember, our unit's already level. All we want to do is stabilize it. These are not to level, they're just to stabilize the unit. Once you feel that uh, you're starting to lift the unit, go ahead and stop. Bring them back up. Once you get them down, come to the rear. Again, your power controls are both on your campsite. Do the same back here. Hit extend and run these ones down. They run down the exact same way. Go ahead, put your pads down. Run these down until they're taut again. Don't want to lift our unit. We just want to stabilize it. So once we got all four of those down, units level and stable, we can hook up our power and water. Big long 50 amp cord here. I think it's about 25 foot. This accessories out of the way. So your 50 amp cord plugs in here on the rear. By coming in to the left, like this, it's a little pistol grip. Once it's in, turn it to the right. Sometimes you may have to wiggle it. Once it's all the way to the right, then you'll put this washer on. Now at the end of that 50 amp service, should you need to plug into a 30 amp somewhere, 
in your convenience pack comes the 50 to 30 dog bone and then also a 30 to 15 in case you need to plug into a 110 somewhere catch power hooked up let's hook up our water on the rear here here's our docking station campsites we're going to hook up city water connection first and foremost your water pressure regulator this water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 psi protecting the lines in your unit I always use this when putting fluid in here because you don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites and you don't want to mess your lines up hook this up hook up your hose but don't turn our hose on yet let's find your hot water heater yours is on the off campsite toward the front a little bit above your dumps all we're going to do and this door will lift right up off here all we're going to do at this point Make sure our drain plug's back in. May have left it out the last time you were camping. In this case, they didn't have you a good one, so they got you a brand new one. Throw some plumber's tape around here. Not putty. Putty will gum up. Get some plumber's tape around there. Get that in there nice and snug. Once that's in there tight, then you can go ahead and turn that hose on. Now, if that hose has been on for a little while, go inside. Open up your slides if you need to. I need you to get inside and open up your water taps. Get them water taps all opened up. Get all the air out of the lines. Get a nice steady flow of water running through them. Once you do, shut them off. Then you know that your hot water heater is full and you can turn that on from indoors. There is an on off electric element right here. See it's set to off. That's generally where it's gonna stay. Unless you happen to plug this into a 110 somewhere, you can turn it on out here, but generally you just turn it on out indoors. If your hot water heater doesn't seem to be working, come check out here to these reset bubbles. If they are bubbled up, simply press them back in. And then up here would be your pressure release valve. Now let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to use city water. We're going to go dry camping or boondocking. In that case, we're going to fill up our fresh water tank. Again, water pressure regulator. Throw it up over here. Way to tell this is full is you go inside and on your tank checks where you can check for your battery and black and gray tanks there's also a fresh water button watch that fresh water tank don't leave this unattended while you're filling it have someone else watching that fresh water tank once it's full remove this hose close that and then whenever you want to use your fresh water you'll turn on your water pump don't turn on your water pump when using city water that's already pressurized all right, we're all set up with power and water. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit. Starting here in this back end. Continuing on the dock station. Up here is a black tank flush. We'll talk about that when we dump our black and gray tanks. Again, city water and fresh water. Get an outdoor shower here. Spare tire with a cover. Got a bumper griddle. Here's you can plug in park cable and satellite dish hookup. This is a flue for your furnace, two things on that. Make sure it's never blocked, and if it is blocked, uh, or if it is running, make sure you don't touch it because it does get hot. There's a vent for a microwave. You also prepped for a backup camera. Again, your power are on this corner. With this slide closed, you'll be able to easier access this extra gray tank right here. Coming up in front of your slide. Directly underneath my hand here will be the low point drain. You can reach up underneath there and open those up when leaving the campsites. Uh, black and gray tanks, of course, are right here. Above that, your hot water heater again. Big pass-through storage area. Inside is your griddle. Coming up front, your batteries. Check your battery post now and then. Make sure those haven't wiggled loose going down the road. Propane is on a regulator. Lefty loosey to open. Green means you've got gas. On the other side of your pass-through storage, you do have a manual override hand crank here. Gotta get your slide open if you lose power. Also prepped for solar. You can plug in a solar panel right here and that'll trickle charge your batteries. Again, your stabilizing jacks. 
big awning, LED lighting up here. These solid steps, we'll talk about that again. Little leash, pet tether here. The prep for a TV out here. Backer will slide in here. Cable in 110 for that. A couple outdoor speakers. And your little outdoor griddle area. That underneath here is a quick connect. There it is in this back corner. Quick connect LP for that. That yeah, about covers everything out here. Let's go take a look on the inside. Thing I wanted to mention on your awning here, if it is raining, you have pitch adjust. You can pull down on this. Now tilt your awning this way and run all your rainwater this way. If you can't, is that way? Solid steps. All right, coming up the side, the first thing I like to point out is your fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of emergency. Immediately, as soon as you walk in, right in your face is gonna be your control panel. So over here is where we're gonna start checking our tanks. So that's our fresh water button. I said you can hold down to tell when the potable water is full. We got our uh, brand new battery, black and gray tanks. Down here, water pump. That's where we turn on our water pump if you're using potable water. Uh, your water heater, your tank heaters. It's just a 12 volt pad on your tanks in case you think they're gonna freeze. Over here's some light. Your awning and slide control. On your awning. These awnings will not stop themselves when all the way out. So you only wanna run this out until your white flap falls down to 90 degrees and you can see your brown bar. Like I said, that will continue to run itself out past that point and start running itself up backwards. So keep an eye on it when you run it out. Make sure you don't run it out further than you need to. Go ahead and run that the rest of the way back in. And our awning, awning light would be the second one here. Excuse me, first one. There's your awning light. All right, continuing with the tour here. I will mention that slam locks work, work best when just lightly slammed. Coming into your unit. First thing around the corner is gonna be your thermostat. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Let's see if we can crank the air up. Get your AC running. While that's running, turn on your TV. There's your AC going. Just want to mention on your AC, I come back over here to shut it off. Go through the cycle all the way to off. See, that shuts off rather quickly. But now when I go through to heat, Cool high, cool low heat. I turn my heat up here. Let that crank up. And you hear the furnace running. When you shut the furnace off, you'll notice that the furnace fan takes a little bit longer to cycle through, as does the uh, um, the AC. It takes a little longer to cycle through than it does the AC before shutting off. There's your TV. Let that turn the rest of the way on for you. Uh, safety strap for travel. Make sure you snap that in nice and tight. Down below that, sound system. Turn that on. Turn that up. I know how good we'll pick up indoors here. But uh, zone A is indoors. Shut that off. B is out, now it's just loud outdoors, or both. So we're just not picking up any good channels inside this metal building. So it looks like uh, you have different modes of AM, FM, disc, Bluetooth, USB, auxiliary. Fireplace, not just for looks anymore. I can go through 
show you all the pretty colors or make it brighter or dimmer in this case but the biggest thing now is the, the heat if you're plugged into a campsite and it's cold in the morning or evening uh, crank up this electric heater save your gas on your furnace crank this up it's already getting warm on my hand here this will get it toasty in here in no time and it'll save you some gas your sofa sleeper Oh, not sure. Yep, you've got storage underneath those. Come around into your kitchen area down here to the right is going to be a breaker box and fuses. A uh, ton of 15s in there. Highly recommend having some of those with you when you go camping. Your Ever Chill fridge. The controls for that are all right there. We have a safety strap for travel. Make sure that's over here for going down the road. Self-explanatory microwave, below that a fan and a light. So cooktop, glass tops make an excellent back backsplash. Turn on your panel light, turn this to light, hit your spark, and when your gas is on, got a light here. Um, same thing with your oven, turn this to light, spark it here, no pilot light anymore. And then, then go ahead and take it and set it to the desired temperature. Rock your panel light down and it becomes an oven light. Put your top back down. Uh, a lot of individual lighting here. Here as well. Plumbing to maintain. Back behind this access panel. It can be all of your wiring, plumbing and bypass valves. Down here. 12 volt carbon dioxide propane detector. The reason I mention that is 12 volts always running off your battery. So if you are out dry camping, boondocking, nothing plugged in charging your battery, disconnect the battery post to keep this from running your battery down while you're gone. Covers everything out here. You just smoke alarm in the ceiling above your living room. And back into your bathroom you have a hand crank open power exhaust vent in here recommend having this snapped close for uh, travel your shower door 110 with gfci reset here a little more plumbing to keep an eye on like i said it's all pecs nowadays it's just that you're bouncing a house down the road and you want to make sure things stay snug Lastly, back in your bedroom. Light in here. Prep for a TV. There's a backer. 110 and cable here. Emergency exit window. Light in here. On both sides. Well, as USB and 110s back in your little cubby holes. We have a little storage under your bed and that about covers everything inside now let's say we're getting ready to leave the campsite we're going to close the unit up i like to start by starting in my bedroom shutting off my lights securing everything in the bedroom making sure my bathroom lights are off again securing everything closing any vents then come to my control panel and hit my main light. Now I can see any individual lighting. I need to walk through the unit and shut off. This accent light above your slide. I'll turn this back on so we can see that. That is what this switch is for. All right, so now I've shut off all the lights except for what I can shut off here at the control panel. Doors and drawers. Go through the unit. Make sure all doors and drawers are secure. Actually gonna put your remote up here in the drawer with your paperwork. Both of these chairs will strap down. Let me show you where those go. One to each side here.
heavy safety strap to strap these down on both sides. We'll make sure that we do that before travel. All doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to impede our slide. Bring our slide in. Make sure your TV snap back. See the importance of having any doors. Any cabinetry down there open. The slide will just rip a door right off it. So keep an eye on it. You run these in. Shut off this light, this one, and exit the unit. Now the biggest thing you're gonna remember here, folks, on these steps, is to make sure that your exterior door is all the way open before lifting them up. They are also adjustable. Cotter pin here can bring these up in case you're on uneven ground. Simply lift these up, nice and soft. Turn this handle either way to lock that in. Before you leave the dump station, make sure you lock and deadbolt your door and lift and turn this handle. Now say before you leave the dump station, in case at the dump station you want to go inside and check the levels of your tanks as you're dumping them on your control panel in there. All right, at this point, we're gonna bring up our stabilizing jacks. We're gonna unhook any power water or cable. Just gonna hit retract to bring them up. If you are boondocking, we're gonna dump our fresh water tank. Other than that, we're gonna hook up our hitch and head on up to the dump station. These are the rest of the way back up for you. I like to keep them down flat. This gonna come down a lot easier later. Now at the dump station, make sure you park accordingly. We're gonna have two dumps. We're gonna have our main dump up here. We're also gonna have an extra gray tank back here. That's for your rear kitchen sink. You can get a bigger, longer, stronger hose from our store. If not, we got a 10 foot hose comes to your convenience pack and we're gonna start by dumping up front. Hook up your hose, pull your black handle. That's gonna be your sewer outlet. Now once that sounds like it's no longer draining, you go inside and look and see if your black tank is empty. If it is empty, leave that black handle open. Again, stressing to leave that black handle open. Grab the hose at the dump station, water pressure regulator again, and come up here to your tank flush valve. Now it's gonna be your black tank that we're gonna wash out. Hook that hose up and let that run for a good five minutes. It's gonna wash all the nastiness out of your black tank. Get down there, close that up. Make sure all that washout has drained. Once it has, you can close that black handle and pull your gray handle. Now your gray handle is gonna be cleaner water. It's your 16 showers up toward the front. While that's dumping, get up underneath here and pull those low point drains. When those are done draining, come over here, lift up on your pressure release valve. Must do that before pulling this bottom drain. Once that's done, snap that back down or your door won't go back on. Pull this drain plug, put your door back on. Then we're gonna go ahead and close this gray tank. Again, cleaner water, so your sewage hose will be a little cleaner. Come to the back, repeat the same process by dumping this gray tank back here. When that one's done, Go ahead and take your sewage hose and conveniently and sanitarily store it right here in your bumper. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this Wildwood Heritage Glen for many years to come. Happy camping.